The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. The spirit world is very real, and the enemy is fighting to steal our joy, our peace, and our confidence. But God has given us everything that we need to win. In today's message, my dad continues the series from his brand new book, The Spirit of Python, and he's going to be teaching us about the weapons of our warfare. So get ready and open your Bibles to Ephesians 6, and let's join my dad now at Free Chapel in Gainesville, Georgia. I'll be back shortly to tell you more about the new book and resources from The Spirit of Python. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith with which you are able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And then we stop there and think the armor is over. But verse 18 is the conclusion and most powerful part. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. He said, I want you to put on the whole armor of God. Paul watched and was arrested and incarcerated for months and months and months at a time. And on one occasion, it tells us that he was chained to four guards every, every uh, four, uh, four hours. They would change out to new guards. He was chained to Roman soldiers. And so as he would notice them, he began to say, we need to put on the whole armor of God. And he starts with something interesting. He says, first of all, if you're going to be equipped to defeat the enemy, you have to have the first piece of armor in this spiritual battle to fight spiritual warfare and defeat Satan and his fallen spirits and fallen angels or demons. He said, put on the belt of truth. Notice, and it was interesting to, to, to understand that the belt was the piece that secured and, and the Roman uh, outfit that they wore, the Roman soldier's uniform, the belt was the piece that secured all the other pieces. In other words, if your belt was not secure, none of the other pieces of armor were secure and in battle they would fall off and you would, you would be vulnerable to your enemy. You had to first of all put on the belt of truth. The belt of truth is so important. It speaks of our character. It speaks of our integrity. It speaks of the fact that we're not living a lie, but we're living the truth. The righteousness of God won't work for us if we're a hypocrite and we're not living the truth. The, the other things, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, the helmet of salvation, it won't guard you from the accuser and the attacks if you have a guilty conscience. But when you put on the belt of truth, the truth of God's Word, the truth of the fact that you're living a, a life that has been changed by the blood of Jesus Christ, grounded in truth, a display of our honesty, 
of our integrity. We're not perfect people, but there ought to be this thing about us that there is an integrity, there is a character to our life. This is spiritual warfare. When you shun the wrong and you do the right, that is spiritual warfare. That puts a power behind your sword. That puts a power behind your shield. That puts a power behind who you are and what you stand for when you carry and you have secured to everything the truth. I am not living a double life. I am what I am, and it is the truth. We must know the Scriptures. The first thing you are to do is to put on the belt of truth. And another way of looking at it is get up every morning and get into the truth. Put on the truth. The belt of truth is what secures all of the other armor so that when you go out and fight the fight during the day, you've put on the belt of truth. Do not neglect this book. This book is so important. Put on the belt of truth. Watch how God will bless and prosper the people who are people of the Word. Let's be people of the Word. Let's be people who read this book. And it is something that is a major part. It was the key piece of armor when you were, if you didn't have that in place, first of all, nothing else would stay on. We must have the belt of truth. Secondly, he said, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Not our righteousness, but His righteousness. The Bible said in Proverbs 4 and 23, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. The vital organs were, were guarded by the breastplate of the Roman soldier. Guard your heart, Proverbs 4 said. Guard, don't let anybody get a hold of your heart. Don't, if you're single, don't give your heart to just anybody. You can fall in love with anybody. So you guard your heart. You guard who you are. You guard your beliefs. You guard your, your heart is the essence of, of who you are and what God has called you to be. And you have to place a guard. You have to put up the breastplate of His Righteousness, because Satan will remind you every day you failed. Satan will remind you every day you're unworthy. Satan will remind you every day. But we don't put on our righteousness. We put on his righteousness. I love that. I love the fact, I love the fact that 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, it says, For God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be offered for our sin so that we could may be made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Put that on every day. Don't go around trying to, per, to live in performance-based religion. No, I put on His righteousness today. I don't have to perform. I don't, I've got truth. I, I put truth on. This is who I am. I'm wearing the belt of truth, and I'm putting on his righteousness, so that when the enemy tries to get to my heart, I stand in his righteousness and his righteousness alone. It protects us from inferiority. It protects us when you, when you have the breastplate of his righteousness on, you don't feel inferior because it's not about who I am, it's about who I have put on, his righteousness. It protects us from immorality. It protects us. Jesus is our righteousness. Can you say amen? Jesus is our righteousness. Listen to this. He, then he says in Ephesians uh, 6 and 15, having your feet shod. And you can't see this guy's feet. I'm going to move this if I can. But he's got his feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He had his feet his, his, his foot gear, and it was to protect his feet. You see, great generals understood that there are two things that are vital if an army is going to move and take ground. Two things that were most vital. Number one, it's food. And number two, it's feet. If the food is not there and the feet are not covered, it's not going to advance very far. We have to have a firm footing. The, the Roman soldiers would have what we would call cleats on the bottom of their shoes so that when an opportunity presented itself, they could move and have a firm footing up under them. And any fighter will tell you that 
if you're going to fight in warfare and win, your footing is extremely important. And so we have what? The, the shoes of peace, the gospel of peace. We put on the peace of God. He's talking about Galatians 5 and 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has set you free. Stand fast in the liberty. Don't give up your liberty. Don't go back into things. Stand in the liberty that God has given you. We're not to be spiritual tumbleweeds that just kind of go all over the place. But you get in a church and you get in a family and you get in a marriage and you stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has called you. The Greek hero in mythology was Achilles. And he was a powerful, powerful warrior. But the thing that messed him up was his feet were exposed. And when the enemy wounded him in his heel, even though he was a brilliant fighter and warrior and nobody, no, no enemy could take him down, one enemy saw that his walk and his feet were exposed. And he lost the battle because he was wounded in his heel. And of course, we know of the Achilles heel saying, the enemy wants to get us off balance. The enemy wants to mess up our peace. The enemy would love for you and I to lose the peace of God. You know, I was thinking about how that we have to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Do I have do I have, you want to get up every morning, do I have the belt of truth on? Do I have, have I put on his righteousness or am I going to try to go around in my righteousness today? Do I have my feet shod with the gospel of peace so that no matter what comes, I won't be shaken? The Lord spoke something to my heart. I don't know, I, th I think I read this somewhere. I don't know where this came from, but I was reminded of it. Uh, this past weekend, the Holy Spirit said to me, relax, the gift is in you. Get up, no matter what you're facing, and put on the shoes of peace. And when you walk into that situation, relax, the gift is in you. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to be something you're not. You don't have to put yourself under stress and strain. Put on the shoes of peace. Get up in the morning and say, relax. I know I've got a big business deal today, but the gift is in me. I'm prepared. I put on the whole armor of God. God is with me, and I'm going to walk into this situation, and my gift will make room for me. Turn to somebody and say, relax. The gift is in you. Quit stressing, quit worrying, quit, quit being filled with anxiety. As a public speaker, I've had to whisper that to myself on occasion. Relax. The gift is in you. Sometimes we get all stressed out about stuff and we shouldn't be. Relax. The gift is in you. Hallelujah. God has gifted you with His presence, with His anointing, with His favor, with His touch. If He wanted somebody else to be there, they'd be there. The gift is in you. The gift is in you. Put on the shoes of peace. Walk in peace. Quit worrying. Walk in peace. This is spiritual combat when, when you're always worried. Am I going to run out? Am I going to not have enough, not be enough, not do enough? Oh my, oh my, am I doing enough for the Lord? That's not God's will. Put on His righteousness. Put on His truth and put some shoes of peace on and walk in peace and enjoy your life. And then He said, take the shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. I want you to take your faith. You know, the, the, um, the Roman shields really would have been completely covered. He's got a little bit of leather here, but they would take animal skins of leather and cover that piece of brass shield. And here's why. They would, before a battle, they would soak it in water. So that when they went out, like in the movie 300, if you saw it, uh, they would take when they were under an aerial assault with arrows, 
they would take those shields and they would form a, a unity defense when they lifted the shields one after another after another when they would lift those shields up it would protect them from the fiery arrows and darts of the enemy and the reason they soaked it in and covered it in leather and then soaked it in water was when those hot arrows hit it would instantly extinguish the fire can you imagine the agonizing pain if one of those arrows hit you and it was on fire and it would burn and, and hurt and to me that speaks of the power of the shield of faith Satan takes a bow and arrow approach he shoots hot thoughts Phew. he stands off from a distance and he accuses day and night, day and night, condemnation, shame, accusation, temptation, arrows, fiery, fiery thoughts, thoughts that, that which he just shoots them and he, and he hopes that they'll take fire. He, he hopes that they'll find a place and begin to burn and burn and burn. But if you've got the shield of faith that's been soaked in the washing of the water of the word and you hold it up, tss, tss, it just, that's my sound effect. It, it just, it, it just, it just extinguishes the fiery thoughts of the enemy. It says you're not worthy and he's accusing and shaming and attacking, but we've got a shield of faith. Praise God. It says that one won't stick. You have to protect your mind. You have to protect your thought life. Romans 8 and 6 said to be carnally minded is death. If all you do is get up and think about carnal things every day of your life and you don't, you don't have your mind spiritually renewed, to be carnally minded is death. Don't just go all day from morning to noon looking at Facebook and Twitter and this and that and this and that and this and that and nowhere in there you're carnally minded and it brings death to your praise and death to your joy and death to your faith and death to your hope and death to your dream. But to be spiritually minded is to be filled with life. Thoughts of suicide, depression, quitting. He shoots those fiery darts. Luke 12, 29 said, Neither be of a doubtful mind. Neither be of a doubtful mind. He comes to steal, still our peace, still our joy, still our confidence. I want to say that again. He wants to steal three things. The Bible said, John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal three things. He comes to steal our peace. He comes to steal our joy. He comes to steal our confidence. Some of you don't have peace, you don't have joy, and you don't have confidence. And it's because the enemy is a thief and he's robbing you. He comes to kill through sickness and through accidents. He comes to destroy through depression, through fear, and through immorality. He can destroy your life. What do we do? We put on the whole armor of God and we hold up the shield of faith. Then he said, having the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. There's a guy in 2 Samuel 23 named Eleazar and he got in such a battle with the Philistines and he fought and killed hundreds and hundreds of them and the Bible said that his hand clave unto the sword and would not let it go they had to pry his fingers off of the sword which is the Word of God the sword which is the Word of God became an extension of his natural life that the two were so intertwined his natural hand and the sword that he was fighting the enemy with that it became an extension of his body and the two were not even they weren't even able to pry his hand until hours after the battle they had to pry his hand would to God that we would be a church and a generation of people that were so connected to the sword of the Spirit that it's just a natural extension of our body and who we are that anywhere we go, 
our answer and our weapon, just like Jesus when he faced the devil, it is written. I do not allow the enemy to push me around and back me up. I pull out the sword. It is natural for me to go to the scripture when trouble comes, when problems come, when blessings come. My, my, this and, and me are inseparable. It's time to relax and realize that the gift is in you, in the truth, the faith, and His peace and His righteousness. Put on the entire armor of God and overcome the enemy. Dad spends an entire chapter in his new book, The Spirit of Python, talking about the armor of God. It's now available in bookstores everywhere, including Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and this month on JensenFranklin.org. With your gift of $35 or more, you can receive the Spirit of Python gift set including Dad's new book, a 30-day devotional, and two great messages on defeating the plans of the enemy and regaining the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Join our conversation online and connect with thousands of other believers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. People all over the world are reading the book and then coming back together to encourage one another. Be sure to share these resources with your friends and family. And now, let's join my dad in the studio for a very special time of prayer. I just wanted to take a few moments and come into your room there, wherever you're viewing and watching, and you know, just pray and ask you to join me in prayer that uh, so many people, because so many people are responding uh, to the Spirit of Python. The book, of course, is touching many lives. It's a message that was really birthed in my heart well over 15 years ago, probably more like 18 years. And, um, you know, I, I didn't at the time ever dream that it would become a book, but it seems to be connecting with many, many people. As a matter of fact, you know, this is just a portion of the mail that has come in in the last few days of uh, just hundreds and hundreds of prayer requests, mostly some praise reports and uh, letters of, you know, request asking for prayer because people's eyes are being opened and they're understanding that I'm not just wrestling with, you know, problems and issues and difficulties, but that there is a force, a spiritual force behind it. People uh, like Clay in Texas who said, I need prayer to overcome my addiction. The spirit of Python has a grip on me, squeezing all of my joy and desire to have a better relationship with my wife and son. I'm spiritual and I'm, I'm trying to, to hold on to my faith. Your prayers and thoughts are much appreciated. Thank you. You know, for somebody who's addicted to drugs and alcohol or whatever the addiction is, to take the time to, to write, you know, I mean, this is an email, and they sent this email in saying, please pray for me. My family is, uh, the, the life is being squeezed out of my marriage, out of my family. Here's Nancy from Louisiana, you know, who says that her husband and her are really going through challenges and that She's just found out, you know, that, that he's not being faithful to her. And uh, would you just please pray? You can imagine the, the stress, the pain, the heartache that she's going through. And the only answer is Jesus. The only answer is the power of Satan being broken off of that, mind's, that man's mind and heart and those, you know, uh, adulterous cords that have wrapped themselves around him would be broken and he would see the deceit the lies of Satan. As a matter of fact, I think we ought to pray now. You've heard and uh, hopefully as it, as it uh, has my heart, it's touched your heart. We were just standing around with, with many of the people who make Kingdom Connection happen. And you know, the comment was made, this is, this is what it's all about. There's a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of resources, a lot of stress that happens to make a TV program, you know, be there every week. And sometimes it's easy to get your eyes on that stuff and forget about what really, really matters is that, you know, we can help people. Our prayers matter. Our agreement matters. Our, 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 the Word of God is the answer. It's not a answer. It is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And we really firmly believe that here at Kingdom Connection. And I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on these prayer requests. And God, I do pray for the many, many needs. I think of one in this pile that I just read of cancer, someone who is battling uh, cancer in their brain. And 
how they need a healing. Others, Lord, who have shared that their family is in shambles and they need a miracle. Hope it just seems to be going down the drain, but you're the God of miracles today. And we proclaim miracles over these lives. We pray for healing. We pray for encouragement. We pray for resources. We pray for finances. I bind the power of Satan. I take authority over every demonic spirit that is trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Every spirit of addiction, every spirit of perversion, every spirit that comes against homes and families and marriages and children and sons and daughters. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan, I command you to loose your grip off of people's lives. We set ourselves in agreement with the Word of God that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we claim liberty and freedom and breath and life into every person who needs these miracles that they've asked for today. I pray for those who are watching this right now, that even in that room they would sense the presence of God, that even in that room they would sense the presence of the Holy Spirit, that even in that room the angels of God would be encamped round about them, maybe laying on a bed or watching from a jail cell or in a bedroom or in the living room or at the kitchen table, Angels of God invade that home with encouragement. Stand by and minister to the servants of God. Lord, those that are weary from well-doing, I pray strength into their spirit today. And I thank you that the power of Python is broken off of people's lives. Addictions are breaking now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I plead your blood, Lord, over every family, over every life, even limitations things that have held people back from breaking through. May this be the place of breakthrough today. In Jesus' name I ask, in Jesus' name I pray, and in Jesus' name I agree with you for your breakthrough today. So there's a story in the Bible that said that uh, David went and fought against the Philistines and he named the place because it was such a mighty breakthrough. They had they had set up uh, strongholds, the scripture said. And he said, I'm going to call this place because David, through the power of God, broke through the, the greatest strongholds the enemy had. He said, I'm going to name this place Bel Perizim, which means the, the God of breakthroughs, the place of breakthroughs. And so that's what we're calling this today, that this is the place of breakthrough in your life, in your home, and in your family. So. God bless you. I hope that you will get the book if you don't have it and get the series that we're offering. It absolutely is full of revelation and insight that's going to really help you. And, uh, you know, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And sometimes you need to see the unseen so that you can pray and have an edge and an effectiveness to your prayers that makes a difference. Difference. So I encourage you to get the book. Call somebody. Tell them about it. Help me get the book out there and uh, we agree for it. God bless you. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.